I might have cash more than the new presenter. Partially founded planning we have called by the report, which is a one that is the near Fox Insurance College. Right, the idea for this is to uh, translate planning problems into the new format without first rounding. The motivation for this is so that the resulting formula will be very small. The size and memory you are solving will be much smaller. And as a result, you'll be able to scale to the problems which are much larger and have uh, many more objects of the same object color. When planning this app, generally the variables represent uh, parts of the plan or problem in a very intuitive way. We have uh, We have variables, Boolean variables, to represent. We have Boolean variables to represent fluency of domain and whether or not it's action to a specific concept. And we wanted this encoding to also be intuitive in that manner and to make time extraction very easy again. Okay. QBF extends SAP uh, to include these universal quantification and quantification there. Beforehand. Uh, if you imagine the SAP formula is a collection of Boolean variables, and we say that the assigner is an assignment to these variables, short forms, such that the following formula has been satisfied. In QBF, we will say that there exists an assignment to A and B in this first formula here, such that for any assignment to Boolean variable C, there exists an assignment to D such that the formula is satisfied. So in this way, we have a, a branch and formula to be two sub formulas that both must be satisfied, one in the case where C is true and one in the case where C is false. So in the second example here, we would say that for any assignment to C, there exists an assignment to D such as this formula is satisfied. In this case, the formula can be satisfied. When C is true, D can be true. And when C is false, D can be false. And that satisfies the formula. So we want to exploit this extra exclusivity uh, and we do it in the obvious way. Our SAP formula is we want to say there's an assignment to all these Boolean variables which represent part of the plan, such that the formula is satisfied, that is, there is a there is a plan. So what we're going to say now is that for any occurrence of an object of this non-grounded type, there is just an assignment to the variables that represent this object, such that there exists a plan. The end of the form is the rest of the last pictures. This is a simple encoding using SAP to work as an example. We have two pigeons and two empty boxes, and we want to put the pigeons into the boxes because that's what you do with pigeons. <laughs> uh, each of these boxes on the slide here represents our Boolean variable. This being SAP, they're all existential variables. So we'll say that. There exists an assignment true and false to each of these, such that the formula is satisfied. The formula itself, all the constraints are invisible right now, but they're pretty obvious. Uh, the actions imply their preconditions, so this place one pigeon implies that the pigeon has already been placed. And the fact, so excuse me, the facts imply a disjunction of the uh, action which achieve them. Uh, so here's an example initial state where box one is empty, and neither of the pigeons have been placed in the box, and our goal is that we place the first pigeon into a box. And that's a pretty obvious solution there. We just choose to place the pigeon into the empty box. You can see this SAP problem here uh, has split the actions into two parts. So instead of saying placing the pigeon in the box, we have two variables, one for placing the pigeon, and one place in the box. This is just the simply split representation that was uh, introduced by Counts and Selman in uh, one of the first papers. And uh, it's, there are more advanced, better ways of doing this, but I'll talk about that later. So the grounded formula, uh, in this case, we have uh, a number of actions, a number of variables the size of the formula in the order of the product of pigeons in the boxes. If you do split, then that reduces to the number of pigeons plus the number of boxes. But we can do better than this in QBF. 
So this is the exact same problem. Uh, but now we're going to need pigeons undergrounded. We have a, a set of existential variables that are representing the boxes. Then we have a single universal variable, which is sort of saying for any pigeon, there exists an assignment to the following variables representing that pigeon, such that the formula is satisfied. Since there's a single universal variable there, there will be two sub formulas, one for each of the pigeons, pigeon one and pigeon two. And we drop the parameters from the existential variables at the bottom now because those variables refer to all the pigeons. One problem we have now though is that if we say place one is true and we put in the first pigeon into the first box, same as before, there's nothing to stop us putting the second pigeon into the first box at the same time. And we don't want that to happen, so it's impossible. So we need to make those two actions mutually exclusive, which we can't do with a simple constraint since they're the same variable, just in different contexts. So we introduce a lock variable here. This variable, it just uh, locks the parameter of this action, place one. And it does this by forcing the lock variable to be equal to the universal variable A. So, in example, here's the same initial state as before, except this time both the boxes are empty. And this is the first pigeon, because we're looking at the formula when A has been set to 2. And the pigeon hasn't been placed, and we want to place it. Here's the other half of the initial state, when the universal variable is false, we're looking at the second pigeon, and he's also not been placed, but we don't care about it. Okay, back to the first part. This will satisfy the goal. We've decided to place the pigeon. And because of that, the lock variable has been forced to be equal to the universal variable. That's effectively bound this first pigeon in as the parameter of this action place one. And we've put it into the first box again. If we look at the other pigeon, because the lock is now different to the universal variable, the action has been forced to be false. So we've effectively made the two actions mutually exclusive with use of this extra variable. And that's our solution. So now, with the pigeons left unbound, the size of the formula, the variables and constraints is now of the order log number of pigeons plus the number of boxes. The reason it's log is because we have to have a number of log variables equal to the number of universal variables. And the number of pigeons is going to be 2 to the power of the number of universal variables here. And here we've now left them both unbranded. So this is the, the best of them. We've included a new action at the top there uh, just to uh, act as the operator in this case, since now both parts of the action have been left unbranded. We've got a new log variable, and that one is obviously the uh, parameter of the uh, box part of the place action. So the initial state is before, and we want to place this first vision, and the first box is empty. So we decide to place the vision into a box, we don't know which box yet, and that forces the log variable to uh, be equal to the universal, the first vision. Now we look at the second vision in the second box, since now the universal variable is false. And since the lock on place one is different from the universal variable, we know we cannot place the second pigeon. And we decide to place the pigeon into the second box this time, which means that box is now no longer empty, and its lock has been forced to be the universal variable. Looking back to the other side, because of that, we can't place the first pigeon into the second box as well as the first box. Okay, so this is fully lifted. We've now logarithmically reduced the size of the uh, formula completely. Okay, before I just talk about the results, I'm going to have five minutes to Good. There's a couple of things I've got over here. Uh, first and the obvious one is what if we want to put the first pigeon into the first box and the second pigeon into the second box? at the same time. Uh, and at the moment, you need two place actions. You need a number of place actions, a number of times you wanted to do this apparently. 
And this is just a consequence of the way we've split our parameters. I said before, we're using the simply split uh, formism is quite old now. And it only allows for uh, partial power parallelism in the uh, encoder. There are alternatives such as uh, Robinson's splitting on ground conditions in 2009, uh, which may allow us to go back into proper parallel times. Uh, we're using a SAS Plus encoder, which I'll talk about later again. Uh, also, not included in that problem was a, a fluid which included multiple parameters of ungrounded types, for example, uh, pigeon in box. Uh, in this case, you really want to remember which parts of these split propositions belong to the other part. Uh, so, this is just an original box as well, the details of the paper. No more complicated than the actual logs. Okay, now the results. Uh, we tested on three domains which involve uh, lots and lots of objects at the same time. We used the SAT encoder that we used SAT 506, which is facts and actions. Um, we did this because it's the, the same state representation that we're using in our QBF formula. There are other representations, better representations. Uh, all sorts of uh, clever tricks you can put into the encoding and into the solver uh, to improve performance. And these are all applicable to the QPF case as well. So we've just used uh, two very simple encodings that we can compare to each other. And we solved the SAT encodings using PicoSAT and the QPF encodings using Quantum. Uh, we use PicoSAT since it's the solver that's used internally within Quantum, you know, the same version. Okay. So this is just a pigeonhole problem I showed before, a very simple problem. But as you can see, as we started to increase the number of pigeons, um, we began to struggle to even encode the problem in SAT. We were using a computer with 8 gigabytes of memory, and I gave it two hours to encode and solve the problem. And in the end, we managed to encode and solve the problem that we couldn't even encode in the first place in SAT. And this, these are the gripper problems. There's a robot, and there's a with massive balls that the robot wants to pick up and move to another room somewhere. Uh, here, we don't scale as good as well as we did with Cooper's problem. The reason being now the size of the domain is the isn't a product of the number of unbounded objects. Uh, since the, uh, the action to pick up a ball and put it back down again only has one parameter. However, we still make an improvement for both the total time and the little bit of solving time. And finally, blocks work, which is a great problem for us since uh, it includes these fluids with multiple random parameters. You want to remember which block is on which other block. And uh, we again were able to encode and then solve the problem that we could even solve they go and solve the case. Okay, so for future work, uh, we'd like to actually uh, investigate with smarter ways of splitting the action so that we can return to having parallel plans. And then perhaps try to include uh, some of the other advantages that uh, state-of-the-art SAT determinants have. Uh, an alternative to the Robinson's split action representation is a SAS plus representation, uh, which works very well since there are two layers that where they have the action layer and then the transition layer, where they describe the DTGs of the problem. And these layers seem to correspond almost exactly with the two existential layers we have in our problem, the grounded and then the ungrounded part. So we simply represent these DTGs once per object type. And uh, we've got some really nice there. And finally, we'd like to combine it with some of our other QBF encodings, one which are logarithmic in terms of the number of time steps. In this work, we've reduced the width of the problem, so to speak. And uh, we can also reduce the length and they end up with a very tiny formula at the end of it, which could be good. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, we have an encoding to QBF rather than to SAT, which performs better on problems in which there are a lot of objects at the same time. And if there are no candidates, so we should note that there are no, if there are no candidates for leaving the ground, and your, your domain just has a few objects of each type then the problem would be resemble exactly the exact problem anyway, and you would never lose time. Thank you.